Okay, so there's both of us. I hope we don't. We won't take both the time. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're going to address your attention to the uh, digital collection of uh, ancient Greek and Latin inscriptions from the territory of today's Bulgaria and how they relate to the corpora and how the collaboration with GLEM institutions and museums in particular uh, influences the digital publication of these corpora. So I'll start with the ancient Greek epigraphic heritage in Bulgaria. Uh, it's uh, over 5,000 inscriptions uh, found so far and counting because uh, each uh, archaeological season there are more inscriptions popping up and more being published. They are, so far, uh, this heritage has been printed into two main corpora. One, uh, the Inscriptiones Greca in Bulgaria Reperte by Georgi Mikhailov, which is in uh, four volumes plus one volume Madenda et Corrigenda, which spans from 1956 until 1995. And uh, the other one is Spet uh, Griechisch und Spet Lateinisch in Schriften aus Bulgarien by Veselin Beshevliev, which was published uh, in uh, uh, Germany in 1964. And uh, the uh, inscriptions published in uh, those uh, uh, volumes uh, for the Mihailov's volumes, uh, the meta language is uh, Latin, which, for better or for worse, falls into um, disuse both uh, among the general public as well as uh, among uh, more specialized scholarly public. And uh, the meta language of uh, the publication of Beshevliev is uh, uh, German. There are, of course, uh, additions to these big corpora scattered in. Uh, uh, separate publications here and there, uh, some, some ways, uh, some, sometimes very uh, hard to access, sometimes published in uh, Bulgarian, which needless to say is uh, uh, a big uh, nuisance for international scholarly uh, public. Uh, and uh, even those who are published and relatively easy to reach are in need, as you can see from the dates of the publications of the uh, big corpora uh, are in uh, bad need of update and revision. So the, yeah, also there were some uh, works published, uh, the mm, most significant one by my colleague uh, Nikolai Sharankov, who is going to step in shortly. Uh, some publications which uh, uh, serve as a sort of addenda corrigenda to these volumes, which make a slight update of uh, what uh, is uh, of what uh, is published so far, uh, and uh, uh, but uh, still, uh, this is not uh, uh, the whole work that uh, needs to be done. So we've prepared a digital edition, a digital collection of uh, uh, this vast epigraphic heritage, which will be. Uh, uh, supplemented with uh, more and more inscription in a very, uh, hopefully, very uh, long span of time because it's a, a huge work to do. But we have uh, uh, put the uh, basis of uh, this work by creating a digital corpus, uh, which is based on uh, a customized uh, EpiDoc compatible template for the monuments uh, found in Bulgaria, which uh, serves best our purposes. Uh, most of you should be familiar what uh, EpiDoc is. Uh, for those of you who are uh, uh, most uh, more distant from uh, this part of the age, this is the subset of uh, the TIXML, which uh, is uh, 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 customized for the purpose of publishing historical documents, mainly inscriptions and papyri. Uh, we have our own uh, uh, authority list, which link to uh, the uh, encoded uh, documents of uh, the separate inscriptions, and we have our own platform for the visualization and indexing of the XML files uh, and the lists. Uh, this is uh, uh, the platform which I'm going to present on the next slide. We have uh, baptized it uh, Ajax, uh, because it's the son of uh, Telamon. And uh, uh, the Ajax platform, which uh, uh, you will also see on the website, as, uh, will be presented by uh, my colleague, uh, contains uh, features allowing basic visualization uh, and uh, indexing. The visualization is uh, according to uh, the standards uh, of uh, publication of uh, uh, epigraphic uh, documents. Uh, it's uh, based on an, uh, all the XML files are stored in an SQL database, and there is a PHP module which processes the uh, SQL uh, database and extracts the information from there for the purposes of visualization, filtering, indexing, searches, etc. 
And uh, there, is all, uh, there is also a server version uh, available for webmasters to install on our website, which I'll show you shortly. And there is also a desktop version, which you can install locally uh, in order to use. The content is uh, revised, as, uh, as I said you before. It is linked to other databases, and we have prepared the bilingual content in Bulgarian and English with detailed commentaries and uh, publications from different sources uh, added to the database. And here's where collaboration with the museums steps in. Of course, uh, we cannot do without uh, the help of the museums. We should use the inscriptions which are on display in their collections or stored in repositories, even those uh, who are not on public display, in order to uh, provide high quality images of the inscriptions update inventory numbers and other metadata which uh, only the museums can provide, and also gain access to uh, inscriptions which were unpublished before or which were considered lost but are s stored somewhere in the repositories. And uh, one good example of such collaboration is our collaboration with the Regional Historical Museum of uh, Vraca in Bulgaria who provided all their Greek inscriptions to be used uh, on our website. Here you can see, for example, a stele dedicated to Demeter, which is displayed at the Vratza Museum and now encoded for the Telamon inscription. Now I'll give the word to uh, uh, Nikolai to give some more details. Uh, we have also collaborations with other museums. Uh, uh, for example, the museum in uh, Lovech, and recently we made an agreement with the National History Museum of Bulgaria and uh, next month we are starting working with their inscriptions. However, there are some curiosities. Uh, I will uh, show only one example. Uh, in one of the original museums, when we said that we want to make a digital edition of their inscriptions, they said, okay, but first we have to make a printed edition. So we uh, made, you can see here, this uh, uh, small catalog of the inscriptions in order to be able to uh, use them for our uh, digital uh, edition. Unfortunately, there are still many people who don't believe in digital uh, publication and they want to see uh, material uh, books with these uh, inscriptions. But hopefully uh, the situation uh, will uh, change, especially when they see uh, uh, our uh, good results. Uh, for the Latin inscriptions, the situation is uh, even worse because uh, we don't have a complete edition. We have only some uh, very old editions from the late 19th century. And, uh, uh, and uh, later uh, editions only repeat what was said in the past. Uh, and there are numerous inscriptions which was, uh, were considered lost. Actually, no one bothered to go and search for them, so they are uh, lost according to the publications, but they uh, exist, and sometimes we can uh, make uh, uh, great improvements in uh, their reading. For example, one inscription, only parts of uh, four lines were published, it's actually uh, much longer, or uh, this example, the publication, uh, the publication showed nothing, and actually uh, we can uh, restore uh, the complete uh, text. And uh, I will uh, now show you only a glimpse of uh, our uh, site. This is the one for uh, the Greek inscriptions. It's uh, named Telamon, a specific word which is used uh, for inscription in our Greek inscriptions. Otherwise, uh, it uh, means uh, the base on which were uh, put the inscriptions. And uh, here you can uh, uh, see and download the two versions of the Ajax uh, platform. Uh, one is uh, the server version and the other is uh, the portable version which, which everyone uh, can use. And the other uh, site which is named Tituli uh, is for the Latin inscriptions. Uh, both sites have uh, also a map when uh, one can choose uh, the uh, inscriptions, uh, and I will show only one example, which is uh, 
interesting an inscription which was known long ago, uh, but uh, when we examined it, uh, we found that uh, besides the Latin inscription of Emperor Nero, uh, whose name is, uh, of course, erased, uh, uh, it had in its end the year 1878, which is the year of uh, Bulgaria's liberation from uh, the Ottoman rule. So someone reused this uh, inscription uh, for uh, marking the year of the liberation of Bulgaria. Thank you. Thank you.